Hi everyone, I'm Issa Down. I'm an artist, author, and illustrator with my company Poppy and Gray Co. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys on Peggy's Pride Weekend. So this is what we are going to be painting. It's a cornflower watercolor and ink bouquet, and we'll be using a loose watercolor technique. So let's talk about the materials you'll need. You're going to need a fine liner pen. I'm going to be using the Micron pen with archival ink. Um, it doesn't smudge and it's really fantastic. I also really like that the ink doesn't go anywhere when I put the watercolor on top of it. It doesn't smudge. Um, and Peggy's pens also work really well, the pigeon letter pens. You're going to be needing a round paintbrush, watercolor brush. I'm using a size eight. I would say a size six or eight would be perfect for this project. Of course, you are also going to need some watercolor paper and of course some watercolors. So the blue that I used for this is cobalt blue. Um, and then I did actually end up adding a little bit of purple in there as well, which you'll see in the course. Um, for this little bit underneath, you're going to need some burnt sienna and browns and a little bit of ochre. And then I like to use sort of a mossy green with lemon yellow and a little bit of Payne's gray for the shadow effects. Um, that add a little bit more depth into the leaves. So that's all you're going to need for this cl class. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get started creating our loose watercolor and ink cornflower bouquet. Um, I think cornflower is a really fun flower to draw and it's super easy and beautiful and it's a simple and fun way to learn this loose, loose method as well. So on this scrap of paper here, we'll see that I sketched out the general shape of the petals of the cornflower um, and of just the cornflower in general. So you get a good sense of the shapes that you're going to need to create um, to create the cornflower petal and um, to have that loose effect. So you essentially just want to create this pointed um, bit. You can do little M's uh, like this, or it's almost like a little... Um, fire flame that you're creating and you're just layering them together into this shape here. So let's get started with drawing. So just using my fine liner pen, I'm going to come in and do that loose sort of sharp M shape and just building them on top of each other slowly into that round shape overall. Um, because this is loose ink and watercolor, you don't have to worry so much about specific details. Um, tips that I would have for you would be to make sure you're holding onto your pen in such a way that you still have control over your, um, lines that you're creating, but you're, you're also staying pretty loose. So you don't want to hold onto it too tightly and create, um, really just stiff lines. So we will just go ahead and do all the petals here. Um, for our three flower bouquet of our little cornflower here. So again, just building up on top of each other. Here, these little M's or sharp little points. Um, as you can see, I'm not being um, super detailed in how I'm creating them because the effect I'm going for is loose and flowy and just really beautiful. Next, you're going to draw this sort of open M or open U bowl underneath the petals and create these little dash marks within there. So you can see here, I'll do them a little bit bigger. This is really all that you're creating within this open U bowl shape. Um, and this is the bottom part of the flower. I don't know what it's called, um, but just adding a little bit of texture here to contrast the flowiness of the petals and to give it a little bit more structure. You can also just do hatch marks here if you wanted to, but it's a pretty simple way to add a little bit of texture in here and contrast this petal. So when we come in to paint, these little bits are more greeny brown and then the other areas above it are blue, uh, which is a nice contrast to have. So I'm also gonna come in and just draw the stems in here um, giving them a little bit of movement and overlap since it is a bouquet. Um, and you want to give it a little bit of movement to show some flow and dynamic space. And in this white area, 
um, I'll be adding some petals in. So that'll get filled in and give it a little bit more uh, fullness and density. And I'm just adding a quick second line uh, to my stems here to give them a, make them look a little sturdier. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding in some watercolor. We'll add the petals or the leaves a little bit later. So Grail, go ahead and grab your watercolor brush and you are going to want to mix some blues together. So you can do just straight cobalt blue here if you want to. I am going to um, be using primarily cobalt blue. If you want to lighten it up, you can either add more water or if you want to make it more of a baby blue, you can add some white into it as well. I am going to add just a little bit of white to show you what I mean here, but mostly this is cobalt blue. So coming in with a wet brush and a little bit of pigment on my brush, we're just going to do this um, very light sort of sweeping motion, uh, almost like a flicking motion like you would do with um, the Micron pen. So it's just really loose and flowy, but you can see uh, it's very similar kind of structure that you get. Um, and don't worry so much about getting in between all of the lines or sticking within the lines. That kind of defeats the purpose of this loose style that I've created here. So just make sure you're just doing little flicks with your brush, um, keeping it really loose and going somewhat within the confines of where you placed your ink lines, but um, still keeping it flowy and loose. Now you can either leave it like this um, and just have one layer, but for a little bit of depth and to add a little bit more of a dynamic look to it, we're gonna come in with another layer. So you can add, while it's still wet, you can add a little bit of just cobalt blue, or I'm, I've am i mixed a little bit of purple in here. So it's adding just a little bit of dynamic shading while staying within that loose feel. You can see on this last flower here, on the left hand side here it's just uh, kind of flat and um, paler and you can see where we've added in the shading um, it just adds a little bit of depth and shadow and creates more of a dynamic three-dimensional um, appeal to the eye and it looks a lot less flat that way and just come in, I'm just gonna add a little bit of pink here. If you look at the center of these flowers in real life, they often have a little bit of pink right in the center. So I'm just adding this in uh, just again to add a little bit of um, something to catch the eye in there so that it's not so flat. Now we're gonna do these little bits on the bottom. I'm mixing ochre and burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna come in and fill them in. Um, I'm staying kind of far away and doing mostly the bottoms and not really touching the blue because I don't want them to bleed together too much here. Um, and again, I want to keep that loose feeling so I don't want to fill it in completely. And I'm just going to come in with some brown and just tap it into the bottom while my paint is still wet so it'll bleed up a little bit. Um, again, this is just for that dynamic kind of look to give it a little bit of life. So now we're gonna mix some greens uh, for the stems. And I'm gonna use a mossy green and a lemon yellow. Um, and actually I'm gonna come in with my pen and I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out my leaves. So it's gonna be really similar uh, to the petals. You're gonna be doing a lot of that same um, sort of sharp mountain uh, look that's still really loose, but you wanna keep it within a similar shape to a petal. Um, as opposed to the roundness of the or of the, the petal. So here is a, a leaf and you want to keep it within that same sort of shape of the leaf. So we're just going to come in and start adding leaves. Um, having them overlap is going to be really important um, because in a bouquet they will always be overlapping. And I'm just going to kind of fill it in um, so that it's a little bit denser in this white area and it gives the bottom of our bouquet just a little bit more foundation in contrast to the really flowy, wispy top part of um, our flowers. All right, I think I'm liking this. So 
let's um, go ahead and get some of this green on our paintbrush. Again, it's that mossy green with a little bit of lemon yellow mixed together. And for the first layer, I'm gonna come in. Um, you can wait until this is fully dry, but I'm gonna just go ahead and do it for you here. Um, and I'm coming in, it's the same size brush, but I've sort of flattened um, the bristles here at the end. And I'm coming in at a, a sharper angle, so more at an, like an 80 degree, 90 degree angle as opposed to coming in flat where it'll um, come out like a, a really wide stroke on the page. And I'm not worrying so much if it, you know, quote unquote, goes outside the lines because that doesn't really bother me here. Um, again, it's just keeping with that sort of loose flow and uh, just not overly concerned about going outside the lines. So what I mean when I say I flatten my brush is I kind of take it to the edge of my water and I just uh, wipe both sides against the edge of the brush and that flattens it making it thinner so that it's easier for me to come in and create a thinner line. You do lose some of the pigment, but um, it's better, I think, than coming in and trying to flatten it with your hand or coming in with too wide of a stroke. Of course, you can also just come in with a smaller paintbrush. So now I'm going to start filling in the leaves here, and I'm doing a similar concept as I did with the flowers and the petals, where um, I'm not necessarily you know, filling in every single part of uh, white space within the petal, or within the leaf, sorry, but I'm um, just kind of coming in and filling it in really loosely. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray to my green and come in with that second layer on top of my wet paint to again add that dimension and to uh, take away that um, kind of flat look that you get with just one thin layer of watercolor. I'm not going to go over every single part of the the first layer because I want some of that brighter, lighter green to come through as um, highlights. And then this darker green with the Payne's Gray mixed in is going to be um, more of my shadow effect. All right, so if you want to add a little bit of whimsy here to the final <laughs> stages of your painting, um, I'm just mixing a little bit more cobalt with a little bit of purple over here and making sure my brush is really saturated with water and um, pigment from my watercolor. And then I'm just going to tap it, holding it about six inches above the page, and I'm just tapping these splatters onto the page. And there you go with your fun, whimsical ink and watercolor cornflower bouquet. All right, here's the final product, and I hope you all enjoyed this quick little tutorial. And feel free to come find me at Poppy and Gray Co. That's gray spelled G-R-A-Y on Instagram. And I look forward to getting to know you a little bit more. And happy pride.